Hey guys, my name is Sarah. I'm a beginning producer and uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to handle FM synthesis and I'm doing this on behalf of uh, Parley School, partnering my blog and I hope you guys are going to enjoy the tutorial. It's my first tutorial and um, I hope there is a lot more to come so I wish you a lot of fun learning and hope you enjoy it. See you! Let's just dive right into it. Uh, first, I'm gonna explain like what's happening on my screen right now because if you don't see my audio workstation, uh, Logic is on the other screen because uh, we don't really need it here. And uh, what you can see like on this screen is first FM8. We're gonna work with this baby, and. Um, this is my smexoscope. It's an oscilloscope. Uh, a lot of you guys will probably have soap or whatever it's called. And uh, this is basically just freeware and just like a simple oscilloscope so we can see uh, the waveform <coughs> Sorry, we're putting out. And uh, this baby right here is a spectrum analyzer, so we can also see like what's going on in the spectrum. And uh, both of these are freeware. Uh, the links are provided below and in the description. And uh, yeah, let's just dive into it. Oh yeah, uh, this one isn't freeware. It's by Native Instruments. Uh, link is also provided below. You can like uh, buy it off their website. It's really, really cool synthesizer, as you will soon get to know. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, check out FM8 and dive into frequency modulation synthesis. So uh, first, what we're gonna do is like we are going to create a new sound, like right here. File new sound. It creates a new sound. And uh, then you would want to head to the operator tab. And first thing you will notice is you do not just have one or two oscillators right here. You have six. And they're also not called oscillators. They're called operators because um, oscillators in frequency modulation synthesis have a different thing to do than uh, oscillators in like let's say additive synthesis and also like to show you guys what uh, is different in between those two I'm like I'm, I'm gonna create a sound like additive synthesis style and th then I'm gonna explain you guys like how I would create a sound like uh, FM style so um first thing when you like would want to work with like completely like let's say I don't know like in massive for instance you would choose something out of uh, the wavetable, let's like say a saw and then you would pick a square to that and uh, you would want to have to saw like one octave up. This is also something that that is really really special for, for uh, this FM synthesizer. Um, the ratio is basically uh, the octaves and then you have an offset of in Hertz which is basically um, kind of acting as a low frequent offset right here. But uh, let's get into that later. With regular synthesizer, you would just like basically add uh, one sound and stack those onto each other. So to do that, I just have like operator F here actuated. It's like one octave above uh, operator E, which I'm going to activate by right clicking it. And then I'm going to directly output the sound here. And um, uh, give me 80. Yeah, okay. Scratch that. And this is how it would sound like. And then you would like, let's say, add unison to that and maybe a chorus or whatever. And you would already have like some kind of like lead sound. With uh, FM synthesis, you do not 
stack um, oscillators onto each other, you let them uh, modulate each other. And this is also why they're called operators, because they are operating with each other. And how this works, um, I'm going to show you guys here. I'm just going to open like a new sound. And now I have like all sine waves here again. And instead of like outputting E, um, at first, of course, I'm going to activate it. And I'm going to let it modulate it. And what's going to happen here, we are going to take a listen. So what basically happened is that operator E is modulating operator F. Operator F uh, carries uh, the signal of operator E in the specified mount. So operator E is operating as our um, modulator and operator F is carrying the signal and is therefore called the carrier. And, um, this is basically um, the, the base of how frequency modulation synthesis works. You modulate uh, one oscillator with another one and get different harmonics that way, get different sounds that way instead of like stacking one oscillator to another. So uh, we're gonna dive a bit further into how the modulation matrix works and how modulating those operator work yeah so okay. uh first thing we're gonna like take a look at is the modulation matrix uh this is this thing here and um you can like either manually like let's say uh add different um, modulations here or you can also like pick from the modulations uh that are in the presets here and um, then the next thing you would want to do or also like it uh, depends on how you would want to create your sound is like pick uh, how the wave uh, forms of the modulators and carriers of your operators basically would look like. You can pick from like basic wave shapes to really uh, odd wave shapes and also wave uh, forms from the TX series. Uh, I have a TX802 standing here and they're also like pretty pretty cool. And um, then you can like basically um, start working getting your first uh, sounds here. And um, let's create <coughs> Let's create a new sound again and let's say we would uh, want to create a really really moving pad with a bit of modulation here and there and um, I would start out uh, with uh, let's say um, sawtooth because sawtooth are awesome for like creating pads and at the moment it sounds like real real boring and uh, one to like add like something different here and okay this is a bit too harsh and then I'd say like okay maybe I can like modulate that with a soft okay this looks good here like what happens if I let them modulate it Um, then like let's say I wanna like add a sine wave to that. Yeah, okay, and um I want this like ratio of two up. I think the 
this would really sound cool with like a lot of reverb and stuff like that and uh, with a lot of movement maybe some unison and um, let's see um, next step is to automate all of this and get some movement into it and also a add uh, the ADSR curves and this is what I'm going to show you in the next step. So what happens next is uh, I want to add an envelope to DNE modulating F so the sound would basically change over time. So uh, first, mm, yeah, first I'm gonna head into E and right now this is static and I'm gonna be add a basic ADSR curve here. You can you can already like hear some movement, but I want this a bit longer. I don't really want want to sustain. I just want like really straight curve here. And with F, I want to add like an ADSR as well. But also no sustain. I want a long attack, and I want ah, oh, come on. One long release. This isn't still quite sounding as I wanted to, so the attack a bit longer. I want curvy. Now I have to like change the envelope here as well. It's a bit longer. This isn't still quite sounding right, especially because here, like, the release time is way too short. Now it's, like, really starting to get a bit swelling and stuff like that. It starts, like, uh, there is a certain movement here already. Yeah, what's happening with E? That's, like, here somewhere. God damn it. And I also want an ADSR. And I also want a long attack. And. Jesus Christ, what the hell? Um, I just want just a bit of this. And. And also long release. And you can see that like the more you add certain modulation to it, the more it starts to move. And next step uh, would be adding effects to it. And um, nah, I think at first we'll add, add to the master tab. And um, I actually want this to sound a bit more wide and therefore add unison to it and uh, a lot of units and pan and um, let's see what sounds good here this would be one voice two voices i think we'll maybe try four maybe try eight yeah now we're getting there let's see no, let's keep this to eight, otherwise. Um. Now it starts like having this kind of sound that I wanted to go for. And now I can pan these voices to the left and to the right by simply clicking, uh, like raising the pen button. I know, like,
like, yeah, okay, let's keep this at like 60 or so. And um, here we also have like uh, other like different uh, parameters we can adjust. For instance, here we can adjust like the master output of the synthesizer if something is getting too loud or whatever. Um, then we can adjust the master pitch, the portamento time or glide time, uh, the time for the appreciator. Um, here it's basically taking the time that is currently set in my audio workstation, which would be 120 by default. And here's quality, and quality uh, can also uh, change the sound to a certain degree by adding analog and digital kind of atmosphere to it. And uh, this is this is basically just like sugar on top of your patch. And what it does, I'm gonna show you right now. <laughs> So analog adds a bit of warmth and detune to it. And digital kind of adds a uh, high end to it and kind of more of a digital sound. I want to like mix some of these two in right now. Okay, cool. And um, now I want to head to the effects, uh, like tab and add effect to it. And uh, first, thing I want to do is I want to shelve this and see what I can do here. And I decided to take out a bit of the high end because that had been really harsh. <laughs> and um, next thing I want to do is like I want to add a flanger and a phaser. I want to add is reverb. Usually, I would like take a reverb plugin, but here I'm just like gonna take this one. I could also like add a delay now. I'm not sure if that would be too much. This is basically how the sound uh, we were trying to do like together sounds like now. 
I hope you guys learned something. Please don't forget that all of this is just a guideline to uh, help you create your own sounds and help you create uh, really, co really cool things with FM synthesis. Uh, please remember, this uh, this type of synthesis isn't really intuitive. You have to spend a certain amount of time to really get used to it, to really know what <laughs> to do at which moment and so on. And you will be soon be able to like create basic stuff like for instance pads and shit like that. And later on create more complex stuff like bells and, and okay bells aren't too complex but more like complex uh, leads and stuff like that. And then slowly you will discover how where Sachel, uh, this type of synthesis actually is, and it's it's really really cool type of synthesis, and it really lets you create completely different things as which, for instance, additive synthesis, because you can have so different uh, sounds in such a short amount of time by just like adding, letting one. Uh, operator modulate the other one and it's really really cool I hope you guys had fun doing this I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time thank you for watching bye